This is Yorkshire Television. In Hello, everyone. You don't have to sit there and stare at a screen with your eyes popping out of your head. Because this isn't TV. It's Basil's LP. So you'll just have to listen. Jack or James, I will sing my way to fame. Barnaby, the bear's my name. Hello. Do you know this one? Hi, hi. Pew, pew, Barney McGrew, cup a dibble, grub. Pew, pew, Barney McGrew, cup a dibble, grub. Up above the streets and houses, rainbow climbing high. Everyone can see it smiling over the sky. Paint the whole world with a rainbow. Mind the gap. I seem to run out of coffee. Und 
Han nak ban Hon dig heja hos trasa Hallå! Hallå, vi gett! Gud, jag! Kan man dra? Vad du nicht? Welcome to Willkommen, the wig and slingback. Slingbacks und wigs. How is everyone? Good evening, my loves. How are you? Good to see you. Oh, it's cooled off, hasn't it, now? Oh, hasn't it? It's still hot up here. We have to put um, blackout blinds up. It's getting hot in here. (laughs) So take up all your clothes. We have to put the blackout blinds up, which then means it gets Scorcho quite quickly in here. Now, can I reveal what happened last week? Yeah, you can. I don't know if anyone noticed this, but during... They they wouldn't. (laughs) During last week's... They wouldn't have noticed. ...wig and slingback, we heard in this room a little... (coughs) ...clicky pop noise. A little crack. And uh, we didn't know what it was. We just thought it coming from outside or something like that. Uh, It got so hot in the wig and slingback that Alan's glasses exploded. They did. There was a little little crack came in the frame. And obviously the heat of the room... Had made his lenses... And the heat of my fizzog... (laughs) Um, combined together, and it went pink. Yeah, so, so his beautiful glasses, which he adored, are sadly no more. And they're no longer made. I think it was the, um, I think the lenses um, expanded. Oh, no. So. Which caused, a, a, you know, the weakest point of the frame to snap. So, new new gogs. New gogs today. Look at the side of them. The side's quite sexy. Look at that. It's like Versace. Um. Uh, welcome. Anyway, let's have a look who is here. Um, straight through the doors, uh, Tracy 30, as always. always as soon as that door is unlocked, one. she's in getting a I drink at the bar. I think she's been here since five. <laughs> she has a little tent outside, like, you know, when people used to queue for, like, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Uh, Scylla Black, of course, she's manning the cloakroom for us, as she does every week. Joel Hazeldean came, and Joel says... Did Peggy enjoy her birthday treats? So, Joel, Sarah and Elaine, thank you so much for Peggy's card and her little present. She loved them. Thank you. Yeah, the uh, the chews we've cut up into pieces and they've gone into her treat barrel. So she gets a couple a day. Uh, who else is in? Claire B80. Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles. Shari Bubbles is with us from a caravan in North Yorkshire. Oh, she's there somewhere in a static caravan. So not just down the road. She's in a caravan. She's... And I think Chris is working, isn't he? She's oh. got Jeffy with her. Now we're going to look on this side, see if Chris pops in. All right, I'll have... we'll keep going. Andrew Chapman's in, says he needs his cider. He's got COVID again. Oh, oh you go in the COVID corner. Go. You'll have to go out back. Sherry's put a gazebo up for you. She's got a mask on. Uh, who else? Joe, uh, Andrew Chapman. My dad is here. My mum and dad are in. Matt Boy Wonder is in. Uh, Euro Pop Top is in. All Hello. the way, all the way. I think from New Zealand. I Euro Pop Top. Been a while, hasn't it, since he popped in? Yeah. Then Marcia Maudsley is here. That's my Euro sister-in-law pop, 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 and my brother. Pop, 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 uh, David Moore is in. David says, "Hey, up all." Hey, up all. Hey, up. Coral Daft, she says, gosh, she's ready for this now. Where's her glass of jam shed? It's, just, it's, it's there, Coral. It's all ready for you, love. Sherry had it all poured out. Anne Keel is in. Hi, Anne. Uh, Kim Peterson. Kim and Jen. Oh, Kim and Jens. Hello. Our little buddies from Denmark. Uh, who else here? here? Mad Abba fan. Pip says, shalom. Will Venus. Will Wiggs is in. Paul McFarlane is in with his capitals. With his capital letters. Uh, Paul and Diane. Hello, both of you. Uh, Pauline Grant. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? I'm, I'm nipping through names as we go. Um, They've been chatting away, haven't they? They have. Fizz is in. Uh, Scylla Black has been filling people in on the Seven Network tune, yeah. which we um, we play as our little intro. Um, Scylla says it's much cooler in her little crypt, so she's okay. Um, oh, it's all just jumped, so I've missed everyone. Where was I? Um, uh, Fizz and Scylla. Ponjo, one, two, three, Gutteridge is in, and they say, thank you for the love you've given neighbours this week. Oh, thank you, Poncho. Oh, that yeah. means a lot. Dave is in. Dave, hello. Hello, Dave. S. Yes. Dave, you won't understand a lot of today, but you'll understand but you, as much you, as normal. You love, you, love, you love the crew. Oh, it's lovely having you here, though, Dave. We love it when you come, al- come along. Um, Dave's going for his exam, his eye exam in 40 minutes. Oh, Ooh. Dave, you'll be all right. You'll be all right. Ellen Meadows is in. Ellen says, hello. Sean Ward. Andy Whittle. Pauline Grant. 
Uh, Emma Webb is in. Hi, Emma. Hello, loves. Uh, Dave got his postcards from Divinity and Sherry and Brandy. Yeah, I think they're all arriving now overseas. Says they're both hilarious. Um, it was moving so quickly. I think that is everyone over in the YouTube snug. Um, over here we've got Mark Hall. Uh, he says, good, e- good, e- good evening, everybody. Yeah, i got Neil and Lady V. We're seeing you at the weekend, are we, darlings? Yes, we are. They're on no. their way to Scarbados. Looking forward to seeing you, my loves. Uh, Mark Gunsman says, greetings from Aberdeen. Uh, Sean Anthony Harrison, he says, she's popped in for a shandy and a turn on the fruit machine. I think it's paid out already, so I'm afraid. Sherry, I think uh, Sherry got, got yeah, the study, women. She's studying them, you know. <laughs> she does, she knows. Oh, well, she gives them a kick and all. Uh, lovely Mark Mondeo and Pearsons. And we're seeing him in a, in a, in a few, in a few weeks, weeks, I think. Yeah. Uh, lovely Suzanne Landry. Hello, my love. The lovely Keith Wellens has popped in for a little, little soup. Keith Lawrence, he said he's so excited, he just can't hide it. Keith Wellens says the drinks are on him tonight. Yay! Yeah! <laughs> um... Uh, Filippo is popped in, um, and he says, oh, lords, ladies and gentlemen, hello. Uh, Melanie Fairley. Hello, Melanie, my love. Uh, Richard Bobbins Duffer, and he says, uh, the Bobbins has bobbed in for a swift run. Deeks, Deeks has popped in and says, hello, hello, love, how are hello, you? Hello, Deeks, Deeks and the fries, I hope you're all all right. Uh, lovely Sarah says hello, and there he is, our little boss boy, Alex. Hello, my love. This is a glass of Wincarnas. Lovely, warm Wincarnas. Uh, uh, Sherry's got some Wincarnas for you, especially. Yep. Uh, lovely Chris Gilbert says, hi, guys. Chris and Wes. Here from a London. From that there London. Oh, it's, it's busy. The, oh, it's, the, it's busy and hot in that there London. Oh, from the big mist. Oh, you got to watch your bag. Watch your bag. Oh, watch your bags in the big mist. Um, uh, Andrew Store. Hello, Day. Good, good day. Hello, hello, Day. Hello, Doris Day. Uh, Jamie Brown says, hi. Andy McDonald says hello. Oh, here she is. Luna Tunes has popped in. Here we go. Andy McDonald says, "Can you wish me a happy birthday for next Monday, please?" And thank you. Happy birthday for next Monday. Oh, we darling. need our, we need our little CBB cards, don't we? Yeah. There's Andrew. There's Andrew behind. Uh, a little bunny. Fizz hops. from the Tweenies. Bunny hops. Um, oh, it's Luna's moving out tomorrow. So good luck with that, love. We've been there. Ooh. Uh, Jamie Brown. Oh, we've got a long list here. Andrew, Jason, and Ruby the Beagle in Liverpool. In Liverpool. In Liverpool, in my uh, hometown. We've got something called Smock Bob. Well, Smock Bob's not from Liverpool. <laughs> I know, but Smock Bob sounds good. You'll love what Smock Bob's written. He says, I'm just slipping on my trog. Oh. Um, Jane Crawford from a wig. Slipping off my gold mules and gliding into Ginzano. Give me the child, trog. Give, give me the child. Give, give me the child. <laughs> Uh, Karen Harmitage says hi and thanks for the vids. Oh, it's our pleasure. You're more than welcome. And Nigel, T- okay, TC. Oh, Nigel and Neil, they wanted to come and, and play in Scarborough, but it looks like I'm going to be away. You're somewhere away exciting. Again. Oh, but next time, next time we'll make it happen. Uh, Jamie Brown says he's excited. Oh, look who we've got. Oh, popped we got in. Dolly Garlic's popped in. Dolly Garlic, oh, all the way then. from that there Southampton. That's down a blast from the past, coast. isn't it? It is. Hello, my love. How are you? And following Dolly Garlic is Leanne McGee from New Zealand. Early morning from New Australia. Zealand, Australia, sorry. Leanne McGee is Hello. gonna see the end of Neighbours I before all of us. I bet she's gutted it's all coming to an end. Yeah, is it ending today for you, Leanne McGee? Today tomorrow? or tomorrow for tomorrow you? Night, isn't it? I don't, they're in the future. I can never understand Australian time zones. Uh Smot Bob's got an observation on Joan Crawford for you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, I think it was the British weather. She came over here to film it, Trog. Oh, okay. Uh, D'Angela sends her love as well. That's Paul McFarlane's wife. And uh, Nibbles and Bubbles says uh, a wonderful thing that we forget to always say, which is if you're in the YouTube room, click the little like button. Um, Because there's 53 of you in there and only 12 of you like us. (laughs) Oh, so we've got lots of Click the little thumbs up. Um, um, I've got a little shout out for Amanda Robinson. It's her birthday today. Oh, happy birthday, Amanda! And uh, hubby said um, he was going to take her out, but she said she'd rather stay in and see our faces. <laughs> go out! <laughs> what are you doing? Turning bring, down bring, a free meal. Bring him round here so we all can go out. <laughs> uh, Leanne says yes. She's devastated. It is tonight that it ends for her. So neighbours, she's oh. got about another uh, how many hours? 14 hours and then it'll be over. 
Spencer Josh, I didn't know you guys were on YouTube. We are. Oh, we've been on here for quite a while, my dear. Yeah, find us, Spencer. We've got a big cha- big old channel, 160 videos, I think, over there. Suzanne Landry, any chance of Jamie getting back on Corrie now that Sean is single again? Or maybe, well, our uh, friend Jamie has just left Corrie. He has, yeah, Phil so with two L's. Phil with two L's. So there's room for another Jamie on the street now. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Damon's gone, I think. Oh, has he gone? Yeah. Well, that didn't last long, did it? No, he was a nasty piece of work. Was he? Oh, well, it was yeah. a lucky escape then, wasn't it? The lucky escape for my character. Uh, happy anniversary for Nibbles and Bubbles is going on in here. Oh, what? yes. Have we got any other little Yes, I'd like to say a big thanks to Sue. Parish News. Sue, who popped over a massive box of treats for us, which included two lovely human hair wigs, unworn, brand new. That she'd obtained, plus lots of treats for Peggy, and a few little little sweety things for us. And uh, she gave us some little lip balms and little things like that. So thank you, Sue, for that. Yeah, tonics, tonics, tea cakes, which are um, great. Also, I'll just thank Joel and Sarah and Elaine for their little prezzy. Thanks to everybody who sent uh, Peggy birthday wishes. There was hundreds of messages for her, which we sat and read to her while she um, sniffed uh, the grass and her bits. Uh, so thanks for that. She had a lovely day, didn't she? Yeah, Spencer Josh. My name is Josh, but Facebook made me verify with ID and didn't understand British passports. So I decided my legal name was Flip, so I can't change it. Okay. Oh, well, we'll know you were Spencer Josh. I am Spencer Josh. Uh, that, 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 that's good enough. Yeah, good day, yeah. says Jason Darcy. Jason Darcy's in the Facebook room. Jason Darcy, why are you not in the YouTube room? Why are you room? not there, my darling? Uh, well, we've got other things to talk about tonight. Have you got other parish yeah, announcements? Yes, so We've had a wonderful week. We really have. Give me sport notes. We went to um, the lovely uh, Stephen Joseph Theatre last night and watched Brief Encounter. But before that, we went to Nibbles and Bubbles for a barbecue. Oh, we did, yes. We met the lovely dog, Jeffy. Yeah. They christened their barbecue with a uh, meat-free barbecue. Oh, wasn't that nice Especially for me. They're meat eaters, but they don't have any meat. And uh, my trainers broke. So on the way back, it's not far. How far is it, the walk? About 15 minutes yeah. max. But um, I had to walk like I was um, injured terribly. I had to sort of lift one leg <laughs> up really high every time. like Charlie Chaplin. Because my little soul was falling off my uh, It was like little Charlie shoes. Chaplin, weren't you? So they wined and dined us on the, the greatest vegetarian nibbles and the wonderful bubbles. And then, yeah, last night... Uh, we saw The Brief Encounter at the SJT. It was a wonderful production. Yeah, if you're um, in Scarborough or near Scarborough, go and see it. It's on for about a month. I think it really is brilliant isn't it it's a great great production it's beautiful and the cast are amazing now do you think I was wondering this that Brief Encounter and you can answer as well do you think Brief Encounter is slightly about a gay relationship do you think they might be symbolising two married gay men but that you couldn't you couldn't portray that because Noel Coward was in the closet wasn't he hmm and it just feels like, because it's yeah. an illicit love affair, it's forbidden love, it's not allowed. There's like lingering touches, they go to the cinema together. I just wondered mm. if that might be something that might be in there. I've never really thought of it, but yeah, you, you might be right there. Don't know. Um, I mean, I, I would sort of refer back to the Celia Johnson and Trevor Howard. Is it Trevor Howard? Yeah, the movie, beautiful um, movie. Yeah, um, but it was, it was a great, the cast were amazing, they could... They were singing, playing instruments, dancing. Oh, yeah, they just, you, you're playing like a scene one minute and then suddenly running over, grabbing a violin, and playing beautiful music, keyboards. Uh, one girl suddenly picks up a trombone and does a brass duet with the guy that's playing like her love interest. Oh, it's brilliant, wasn't it? And the it? scene, it's the scenery in the set was, was wonderful. Um, and the, oh, it's, go and see it if you yeah, can. There's, oh, and it's going on tour, I think, as well. Yeah, I think it? it's going to Bolton mm. and it's going to Keswick. Yeah. Um, so it's going around. If you're near a theatre in the round, it's most probably coming to you. Go and see it. And then uh, we, we popped out to take a photograph and we met the lovely Corinne, didn't we? And her mum. Yes, we did. From, Br- from Bridlington. So someone came up and said, I follow you on social media, which is always exciting. Yeah, so it was nice to say hello to her. Um, and we've had a, a great week for interviews this week, haven't we? We met lovely yes. Helen Beat from... Hulkingston Radio and a lovely hubby. So we're going to be on Hulkingston Radio maybe in a couple of weeks' time. Yep. And then um, we met the amazing Timmy 
Alexis Carrington Ward. Here she is online for a wonderful long interview. Uh, it was great. That was that was fun, wasn't it? That was fun, and hopefully that will be on this weekend. So we're going to advertise it because it's an hour long with us two, yeah. like putting the world to rights. With um, here she is, and do look at his do look at his videos. They're very very funny. I mean, he's meeting the, the likes of Rusty Lee and Biggins and. Um, Eggs, what's it, eggs and bacon? What's the name? Cheryl Baker. <laughs> Cheryl Baker. Um, and yeah, they're really funny. So do do have a, a look for him on on YouTube. Um, very funny man. Who's just arrived? Jill Barron. Hi, Jill. Andy Whittle and Cy Slimbo are in. Good to see you. Um, is that is that all my little um... parish notices from Alan? Also, still available if you would like one. Ah. Oh, hiya! Hi, dolls! We're on us holidays! Oh, yeah. Went to a lovely cocktail bar. I had sex on the beach. But unfortunately, I didn't have time for a drink. Anyway, we wondered if you want a postcard from us, too. Well, I'm going to tell you where in the world we are. You won't find out until you get it. All the details are below. And you can also get a postcard from Divinity. Live, laugh, love, Nana stays. And even Maggie Bob. Hey, Striver. Gone. You'll be hearing from us soon. Thank you very much. The little spinning Grundy logo. No, the, and the orange, do, 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 the orange do, do, do. text. Yes, Neighbours, Neighbours Week. Uh, we're going to be doing our top five Neighbours uh, countdowns. I was a little bit obsessed with Neighbours at school, were you? Oh, yeah, yeah. I would watch it maybe twice if I was on holidays. I think I would watch it maybe twice, possibly three times a day. Yeah. Um and we videoed the uh, Scott and Shining wedding. It was so just massive at that time, wasn't it? I must it? have watched that hundreds of times. What do you think made it so massive? What made it such a big thing in the eighties? Well, for me, it was um, it was youths that were sort of similar age to me, and uh, you know, I was always a bit sort of jealous of their lifestyle because it was all sunny and they had swimming pools and. Their school looked better than mine. Yeah, do you know what? I this I had this feeling as well when I went to visit Australia and I stayed in Perth for work. Australia is ri- is so similar to the UK and Britain, but it's hot and it's clean. <laughs> it's like bright. It's like a bright, ver- a shiny version of the UK. So it's really familiar. Um, and I think that played a big part in it, that it was like a shinier version of the UK. So it wasn't like out of reach. Like Dallas or Dynasty, and all the houses were lovely, weren't they? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They were big and they were roomy. They were all like one floor. They were all detached. They had like weird doors, <laughs> like yeah. weird sort of glass door, and then a weird metal door as well. Yeah, I, d- I don't think I ever saw any bad weather or rain or anything. They all had swimming pools. Oh, I don't know. They didn't all. Not all of them did. I think one of them. It might be. Who had the swimming pool? The Ramses because of Shane's um, training. Yeah, yeah. Did Mrs. Mangle have a pool? No. I've got a feeling that house had a pool as well. Um. Yeah, and they were young. They were young people, weren't they? Yeah, like, there a, and there was a lovely little dog. So there was no one young in um, in Corrie and well, East Enders was. Well, well Tracy that? went to play her tapes for yeah. eight years, and we never saw anything of her. So it was like teenage storyline. So no wonder it appealed to us all. Um, Jason Dust is now popped over to the YouTube bar. Um, Dave is going. Oh, for his eye test. Dave, good luck with your eye test. I hope it's all all right. Thank you for coming along. Um, Here we go. Come on, be honest. This is Alex Johnson. Who did you fancy on Neighbours? I fancied, not going to try a spe- try and spell a name, her who sang Torn and the twins were all right. Natalie Imbruglia. Um, Beth, I think she played. And the Alessi twins. Um, who did you fancy? Oh, no, let me have a think. 
I mean, you like Clive? Did you like Clive Gibbons? No, he had the same surname. Um, I did like uh, Mike. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, and I still quite like the geek. Was there anybody geek in it? The first Scott? Oh, the first Scott. I can't mm. remember his name. Yeah, he was sort of mousy haired. Um, yeah. Who did I fancy? Yeah, Joe Mangle, I fancied. Oh. Um, I like the fact that I was I fancied the other sort of lads my age and you were into the old, older men. <laughs> I fancied Philip Martin. Max Ramsey. No, I fancied Philip Martin. Because yeah. I liked him in Sons and Daughters as well and then I liked it when he got a bit chunkier. Um, but uh, Joe Mangle, uh, Joe Mangle I really did fancy quite a lot. Bit of rough. Bit of rough. Uh, no pool at the Mangles, says Cilla Black. She's and she is unanimous in that. Mm. Um, Matthew Fry just nodded about the Alessi twins. Do you remember that one of the Alessi twins had a hard G, so it was Gail and Gillian, not Gillian. Gillian. Oh well, well, yeah, Gail and Gillian. But the names weren't. Oh, what were their names in the show? Kath, Caroline and Christina. Caroline and Christina are Alessi. K's. Ka- no, with C's. I think C's. Caroline and Christina are Alessi, played by. Gail and Gillian Blake Naker. What goes on in this this noggin? How I remember. Darius uh, Perkins. Is that who played the first Scott? Scott won. And I think Jason Darcy said that he sadly died a few years ago. Oh, Darius sadly died a few years ago. Oh, that's sad. Oh. Nibbles and Bobbies, he was nasty in Sons and Daughters. Wayne Hamilton. Misunderstood. Um... Nibbles used to, uh, Bubbles, sorry, used to like Des, Des Clark. Oh, did you? Oh. I remember. He wasn't that bad, actually, was he? I remember when I, uh, someone at our school, when she saw the words, the name Des Clark written down, pronounced it De Clerc, <laughs> and thought, <laughs> thought we were writing French. And also, do you notice that, that uh, a, a lot of ladies started to get the, da- start to get the Daphne hairstyle? Uh, the, like the short one? Yeah, the short, short, spiky, sort of highlighted. Daphne hair. Daphne got longer hair as it went on, though, didn't mm. it? I definitely remember Daphne having a small um, pony and a scrunchie. And, of course, there was a few mullets, weren't there, kicking oh, around? Andy McDonald's just blown my tiny mind. What's he said? Have a read of that comment. Did you know Yeah, we knew that. Well, that I don't of, think I was, knew that. That was one of our facts we, we put oh, out. Did I, I did know that. It's blown my mind, though. Erinsborough is an anagram of Neighbours. Now, we were told this um, by a big Neighbours fan when we did our opening credits. Oh, spoof. okay, yeah, 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 we did know that. And it blew our minds then. And we we've forgotten did know it, that. and it's re-blown our minds tonight. I have my, my memory shocking in it for things like that, but I can remember who the three Lucys are. Sasha Close, Kylie Flinker, Melissa Bell. <laughs> it comes off my tongue like that. Um, oh, there we go. Billy Kennedy, Alex Clark says, Billy Kennedy. When mm. he came in with his shirt off, that's when Alex realised he was gay. Yeah. And am I, am I right in thinking that you could watch an episode three times? So it was on at uh, one twenty or something like that. Then at five. And then the following, and then the morning, following morning. It they, was like on at half nine up, or twenty yeah. past nine. So if you if you if there was an episode you really liked, you could see it three times if you wanted. Martin hides and he's telling he's saying you can berate me, Ellen. For uh... <laughs> yeah, get your blue facts right, <laughs> idiot. idiot. <laughs> Andrew Chapman's dad fancied Madge. <laughs> Oh, Madge. She had a grass voice, didn't she? She had the fags, didn't she? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Leanne, Mickey, here we go. Neighbours is what we expect Australia to be, but Leanne's been there 13 years, and there's places I didn't expect existed here. Smock Bob, Doug Willis and Pam Willis. He was British, she was Welsh. Cody. Doug Willis was uh, Jason Donovan's dad, wasn't he? Yeah. With their daughter, Cody. I know, Smock Bob's saying that loads of the cast were English. Mrs. Mangle, Mike, Des's mum. Des's mum. <gasps> Myra de Groot. <laughs> we were a that? little bit obsessed with Myra de Groot. Do you know, I was obsessed with a lot of battle axes in Neighbours. I loved them all. I was obsessed with Myra de Groot even oh. when I was about 13. I was even more obsessed when I realised she was called Myra de Groot. I think that's when I knew I was homo as well. Well, you see, the thing is, it was the um, I was watching Prisoner as well at the time. And I was just sort of get so excited if, if there was a character that popped in, Neighbours. Myra de Groot um, hosted the like 36-hour Waltzathon, didn't yeah. she, in a, in a red tracksuit. And did she have big Deirdre, Deirdre, Deirdre glasses on? I don't think Myra de Groot wore a red tracksuit. The girls did. Anyway, we're going off piece. We are. You see, we're getting carried away. But we're going to be talking about Neighbours. But first of all, 
Um, I think we need to talk about what's going on in this country. And at the moment, there are troubles, aren't there? Yeah. A lot of things going on in the world. And mm. last week, we solved the heat wave. So this week, we're going to solve another problem. So we're going to hand over to what we hope is going to become a regular feature. Shall I hand over? Yep. Why should I have to walk seven o'clock in the evening from the Robins up here if I want to go out? Why? It's not fair. not fair. Hello passengers, hello driver. Now as an upstanding citizen of this fair city who gets things done, I've been asked to look at some issues that this country faces and add my two truppence worth. Welcome to the Bog Report. Today's issue is the travel build-up at that there Dover. As holiday makers travel to the continent, I ask why? Why? They're all desperate to go over to France and neighbouring countries. It's estimated that this travel chaos is going to escalate throughout the summer months. It's not fair! As a seasoned bus passenger, I recommend just that. Park and ride buses. Why, you ask? Why? Well. If you think that one little car carries between one and four people and a Bristol City bus can carry over 130 passengers for every 45 cars that's one bus. Do the math. Do the math. Problem sorted. Thank you driver. Another solution would be to try and encourage these holiday makers then there's no need to go over to France and the neighbouring countries. We've got all that we, we want here. Now I love the French, the lovely people, but I think we need some French rebranding and that'll try and encourage the people to stay here for vacation. Now let's start with the Brussels sprout. It should be renamed the Brizzle sprout. My neighbour Bert, he grows one in his allotment and pops them through my letterbox. French fancies should be renamed Sickly Iced Sponge Blocks. Let's rename Cocker Van to Chicken Wine and Bacon Stew. French fries, aka Le Frites, Thin Fried Chips. Quiche Lorraine, <laughs> Emmanac Pie with no lid on it. In it right? French baguette, simply a snake loaf. Croque monsieur, cheese on toast. Croque madame, cheese and toast with egg on it. French onion soup, onion soup. Tart tatan, upside down apple pie. Didn't drive. Crepes, pancakes. Crepe Suzettes, Suzettes pancakes. Dawn French, Dawn not Saunders. Simple. So there's no need to go insane. And if you want to see a huge, upright, raw iron lattice tower, pop to Blackpool. Until next week. Thanks, driver. Why? It's not fair. Well, there you go. There we go. So there you go. Another problem sort sorted. <laughs> Maggie Bog sorts the nation out. Uh, if you enjoy that, let us know, um, and we will make more. Um, we are. We're going to put that up on YouTube tomorrow morning, so you know what to do. 
watch it on YouTube, click the thumbs up, click, uh, ding the little bell, whatever you need to do on there to, um, to help us out is brilliant. Comments are, are fabulous. It just shows we're getting like interaction and that really helps us out and gets us in front of more people because of course this weekend, just gone, we created for you the iconic, especially for you. We even went out on location to film. Yeah, we went down to Scarborough Station uh, to film uh, Jason getting off his train and waiting at the station, things like that. We've got a lot of footage of me running around Scarborough Station. And you ran by the house of S&M, didn't you? We went, yeah, to the house of S&M, which is the new cafe our friends Martin and Stephen are opening up. So uh, that S&M stands for Stephen and Martin, any of you with a dirty mind. Uh, and it's going to be fabulous. And I jog past there as Jason. Well, I did, I, I did jog past it. But everything was wobbling too much when I, I jogged, so then I strolled. Uh, it made me think, God, I need to go out running again, lose a bit of weight. Um, but we had fun doing it, didn't we? We did. Uh, yeah, Jason does a nice <coughs> turn when, uh, when he leaves. Um, Divinity, could Divinity give us some idea of when these crises are going to be over? What are political spirits? You have to, Spencer Josh, you'll have to get a postcard from Divinity. <laughs> she'll tell you exactly. I'm sure she'll be making an appearance soon, won't she? She will. Anthony Berry has just arrived. Um, Alex Johnson's asked another neighbours question here. Were there any characters you didn't like? I wasn't keen on Brett. Remember him? I thought he was a boring wet lettuce who spent his whole time chasing after Debbie Martin who didn't care about him. Um, I don't remember Brett. There were characters I didn't like as much. Um, mm. I'm trying to think of ones that I didn't really like. The Bronwyn. Bronwyn was a bit of a do-gooder, wasn't she? And Bronwyn had um, like um, a sister who was a bit Tish Dean. She annoyed me a little bit. I can't remember her name. Bronwyn's sister. She was a bit irritating. Um, we're going to do our top five. So we're going to talk about our, our favourite Neighbours moments. Do you know someone who didn't make my list? So who didn't make my list, but was actually one of my favourites. Mm. Annalise. Do you remember Annalise? Oh, yeah, I remember her. Annalise yeah. Hartman. She um, she was like Lou's girlfriend, but she was also at Erinsborough High. Yeah, she was. And she bring out some mu- uh, uh, music as well. No, I don't think she did. I don't think she bought out. I think she went off to Hollywood um, to try and get a Hollywood career, but I don't think it ever happened. Yeah, quite a few of them did quite well, didn't they? They went and sort of became stars in films. And yeah, yeah. Bit well, Billy from Billy from Neighbours. He went off and did House. Well, Guy Pearce was is must probably the most. Yeah, Guy Pearce did loads of stuff. Successful. Jim. Oh, of course, yeah. Jim was in Ugly Betty. Ugly Betty and, and um, other other big stuff. Other bits. Jim always played nasty people. I think. Mm. Here we go. Brett, Brett had massive glasses. Um, didn't like Sharon. Was it Sharon? Bronwyn's sister. I used to go jogging, Scylla. I used to... I did the couch to 5K. I haven't done it for ages. I should go running again because I quite liked it. Gareth in Porto has arrived. Um, shall we... We'll have an ad, ad break, yeah? Have an ad break and yes, then come back yes. with our top five. Yeah. So... We'll hand over for a quick ad break. Right. In case you hadn't heard, new neighbours have just moved in and everyone's talking about them. They can be nosy, noisy, and a little bit naughty. And they're going to fascinate you. Neighbours, your brand new drama, 6 o'clock weekdays. G'day, Britain. It's Sun Lotto time again. And here are the first two numbers in the second game of Sun Lotto. Right, here we go. 19. Go for it. 7. Check tomorrow's sun for all seven winning numbers. Big cash prizes to win. See, See you tomorrow, tomorrow for the third exciting draw of Sun Lotto. Hey, now your favourite snacks can win you 50 grand. Or one of these when you play Neighbours Lucky Letters. Inside Arnold's Ruffles, Bin, Doritos and Cheetos. There are Lucky Letters. You could win terrific prizes, including a fabulous world trip for four people. And every pack is a free mini poster of someone from Neighbours. Wow! This is even better than 50 grand. <laughs> oh, no. So, get your Ruffles, Stins, Doritos and Cheetos today. It was a joke. I didn't expect Eileen to believe. Did I? I mean, 
anyway, it's absurd. You who with Captain Nova? Monte, the Ramsey Street women are in trouble. I can't be held responsible for what the TV says. Of course you can, you stupid woman. And Harold's had enough. You two and Madge Ramsey are like the witches from Macbeth. I'm afraid that I have to resign my position from the coffee shop, effective as of now. Harold makes a monumental decision. It's left me with no option but to leave Erinsborough. Monday on 10. So, it is our top five Neighbours memories. So, not top five Neighbours characters or scenes. We kind of mashed it all up. Mashed it. In all. one. Um, Mash it I up. mean, mine's quite early on Neighbours because I sort of didn't start. I didn't follow it when I was like working. and. Yeah, mine will be early Neighbours as well because kind of as soon as, yeah, as soon as I started working, I didn't really watch it anymore. So, I guess as soon as the Scullies came in. So, Reb Keen. When she joined with her family, she was married to Bongo Connors, mm. and I think Holly Valance might have been one of her daughters. When they joined, it's kind of when I stopped watching it. Yeah. Um, and I think I stopped watching it when um, was it Marlene was in it. Marlene. Marlene and uh, her daughter. Cheryl. Cheryl was replaced by Doreen from Stubblegate. Cheryl, yeah, it was Helen Smart. But wasn't they kept. It? Chain swapping mad, didn't they? Now, Marlene looked a bit like a Henson oh, creation, she didn't did. she? She yeah. looked a bit like a pod person from Dark Crystal. She did. She was lovely. Apparently, Marlene left to go on a cruise to listen to Elvis and just never came back. They wrote her out and she was never like heard of again. Oh, I hope she's all right. So she just disappeared. Um, top five. Let's have a look. So, do you want to go first or Yes, I? no, I can go first. Okay. Uh, Alan's number five. Let's get this going. Oh, what's happened? It's all right. I'm just sorting things out. There we go. Oh, now you see, I did mention battle axes, didn't I, early on? And I love, I love them all. Um, but I love, I used to love Mim. <laughs> Mim. Auntie Mim. Wasn't she? She was like the headmistress, wasn't she? Was, she was. She always wore like big black straw hats. And she was, she was evil. She was firm. And then she became Mim. <laughs> Aren't she softened? Was she Mim to Christian Schmidt? Most probably Auntie Mim, wasn't it? Was it Auntie Mim to Todd? Was it Auntie Mim? Yeah, it might have been to Todd. No, it's Dorothy Burke, isn't it? A character name, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I loved her. She was only in it for a few years, about three years. Name played by? Um, oh, uh, Ma- Maggie, Maggie Dents. Maggie Dents, a.k.a. The woman with an... Bev with Baker. The, Bev Baker with an yeah. needle. Maggie Dents. Um, Silla says Marlene was played by the late Moya O'Sullivan. Um, you see, I loved, I loved her as well. What happened? Um, you're, you're Mim in our um, opening credits, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, and she gets hit with a beach ball. <laughs> I wanted to have her in it because I just liked her look. Was she only in it for a couple of years? That's, I think 90 to 93, I think. Oh, Mim. Was she, you guys who are in there will know, uh, you big fans, was she Mim to Christian Schmidt? To his character. Was it Todd? Ah, uh, no, here we go. It was Ma- Auntie Mim to Phoebe. Yeah, of course it was. Blonde Phoebe, who got pregnant by Todd. Yeah. There we go. Mrs. Burke, tough, of old, tough, tough as old boots, but fair. So she was a sort of Mrs. Mangle replacement, wasn't she, do you think? Or is Mrs. Mangle already gone? Mrs. Mangle had gone, I think, mm. by then. Um, yeah, I think so. And also, a bit like... Um, did uh, They had... Um, Morag in Home and Away. I think it was a sort mm. of Moraggy character. Yeah. Wearing the sort of orange, like um, Cornelia Francis. Barbara Hamilton. So do you want to have my, num- my number five? Oh, yes, please. Jamie's number five is... Hang on, let me open this folder. My number five. Now, I've mentioned this before. Um, so this is... Uh, this is a scene from perhaps my favourite kind of month of Neighbours, maybe week of Neighbours. Um, Neighbours hasn't really done very well or didn't do very well with um, kind of diversity casting back in the day. And they brought in a Korean family called The Limbs. And uh, the first episode of The Limbs, Julie Martin, Black Polonek, her dog, Holly, goes missing. And she believes that the, the, the Limbs have barbecued it. 
Um, so she goes and she accosts Mrs. Lim about um, eating her dog. And Mrs. Lim says, I did not eat your dog, Julie Martin. Uh, Mrs. Lim was maybe one of the worst actresses that's ever been in the show. But the poor Lims, they had kids and they were good actors, but they didn't last. They were there for about two months. They were like proper kind of token. Let's put in a diverse cast, but then not really do any good and writing. Was with she them. middle Julie? Julie too? She was Ju- She was Julie till the end. She was Julie oh, was till she? the demise of Julie. Yeah. Oh, did she get full of a building? Or yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she had a daughter called Button, who was um, slightly annoying. Hannah. Mm. Um, yeah, but there is a scene. I can't play the scene, obviously, because um, we'll, we'll get we'll, we'll get, get spanked. Silla's police will get us. But yeah, if you look it up. Um, I did not eat your dog, Julie Martin. It was maybe one of my favourite lines of Neighbours for a long time. Um, I guess I was at university around that time, so I would quote yeah. it quite a lot. <laughs> and of course, look at lovely Anne Haddy. Look at Anne oh. Haddy's hair. She was lovely, wasn't she? Alan plays Anne Heddy in our um, neighbours. I didn't have a beautiful homage, hair like that. But we didn't have the wigs at that point because we were no. pure lockdown at that point. But I, I loved, um, I loved Helen Daniels. Do you know what I loved about Helen Daniels is that she used to get a little bit of paint on her cheek. Yeah, <laughs> as artists too. <laughs> She'd wear a smock, yeah. little bit of paint here. And do you remember that she, where she used to want to go to to do painting retreats? Oh, it was some weird name on it. Uh, yeah, do you remember? No. The Bungle Bungles. That was it. <laughs> she always wanted to go to the Bungle Bungles. I, I would if I had to live in that household. <laughs> <sighs> so yeah, my number uh, my number five is um, Julie Martin's Dog Barbecue. Which, um, with Jamie talking about um, Helen's art, brings us on to my number four. Which was the Mrs. Bangle painting. And um, I remember um, this being like a big build-up that uh, Mrs. Mangle was like oh, so giddy about, you know, this paint portrait being painted of her. And I think when she's shown it, she just goes from like, it's hideous, <laughs> absolutely hideous. If I wanted a caricature. And then she says, we're like, well, uh, I'm not surprised if somebody from this family has painted this. What's it painted for? Is she like Lady Mayoress or something? Or just I it... can't remember, but it's... Um, I remember Helen Daniels trying to sort of say, no, it's, but it's not a photograph. It's my style. And um, I'm, tr- I'm trying to, um, uh, you know, she's trying to you know, put lots of positiveness into it. It's currently on the wall of Jane, Jane, plain Jane's house in Neighbours. I think it fell off the wall recently as well, didn't it? Which might have been like a sign from beyond the grave. Um, I love those bits of Neighbours when it was all, you know, a little, little bit of comedy, a little bit of comedy shtick. We, uh, it's my, uh, it's a, my birthday coming up in August. And um, yeah, I've been dropping some hints, haven't I, for, yeah. I think I might want a full-size Mrs. Mangle picture framed um, for our for our living room. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> I think you can get you can. There are printers who do them, um, and hopefully it's good quality. But yeah, even I'll do it myself. Yeah, you could paint. I bet you could. I love a long neck. There's a long neck because she's always putting her beak into people's business. Well, I think so she's like I uh, think it's, an it, ostrich. It, it looks, you know, being the sister Wendy in me, I'd say. It was, must be like one of those like old-fashioned regal portraits, wasn't it, of the old kings and queens? But the long neck is something to do with her getting in everyone's business, isn't so, it? Yeah. Like sticking her sticking, sticking her nose in. in. Uh, let's have a look at my number four. So my number four. Oh, I keep opening the wrong folders over here. My number four is Melanie Harris, <laughs> but specifically Melanie's laugh. Now the actress here. Um, kind of came in to Neighbours as a like a one joke character, um, and she was just meant to be. It was like she was like me and Corey, you know, just coming in and having like one funny scene, and it's sort of like a stereo mm. stereotype and really funny. But the last laugh is on her because she's still in it now. Was there laughs like that? <laughs> I have the laugh. You got the laugh you. for us. Yeah. So. This is Melanie Harris's laugh. He makes me laugh. He's such a funny person, don't you remember? That's it, I remember it. <laughs> well, I bet it was sore in her throat. Um, but she stayed in it for a long time. So she was um, 
She married Joe Mangle. Yeah, yeah. After uh, Kerry Mangle, Kerry Bishop. Oh, and she was... Was shot by duck hunters yeah. protesting and she was pregnant. Shocking. That was a really shocking uh, moment. But yeah, Melanie, specifically Melanie's laugh. Uh, Lucinda Cowden. Thank you, Scylla. Yeah, the wonderful Lucinda Cowden, who when I was at university in Kent, um, she was doing pantomime. And I think it might have been her first panto. And we, me and my friend Katie went down there and uh, watched dress rehearsal and met the cast and kind of chatted about panto and the history of pantomime and stuff. Mm. She's going to marry Toadfish tonight. So, uh, yeah, for having one laugh, the last laugh is on her. <laughs> he makes me laugh. He's such a funny person, don't you <laughs> Henry's loving it. Well, it's Henry's girlfriend. So, yeah, Melanie's laugh is my number four of my neighbour's memories. Alan's number three is... Oh, playing James Makeover. I think it was it was one of those episodes where they were doing the makeover and the the, the episode ended. Yeah, I think you saw the back of her yeah, head. Yeah, <laughs> you did. And we had to wait like till the next day or like four hours um, um, to see the results. And everyone's like, God, I hope she's going to be beautiful. And she was, wasn't she? Do you remember when she came in it and you just knew yeah, she was you beautiful? Knew. You knew. There was nothing about her that was not, you could tell that this actress was stunning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, again, I loved Jane, the character. And Jane is still... Well, she's still in Neighbours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she... Um, what is I she, forgot is, she... is when we watched it back in the day, she was going to marry Des. She was, wasn't she? Yeah. I forgot all about that. So she was going to marry Des, and I think she jilted him hmm. at the altar. Because uh, she, she was um, with Mike for, as, as well, wasn't she? Yeah, 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 she was. But then she, I think she lived with Des and was going to marry him. And then... Uh, Jilted him, I think, and then um, they left. And they then left. Back. Then came back, and then Des came back, and I think they got married. And then I don't think it lasted isn't for long. Is she a teacher or head, headmistress at the school now? I think she is. She's yeah. still beautiful. And a brain stunning. Box. Um, but yeah, look at her, stunning. I am. I am playing Jane in our mm. recreation, aren't I? Yeah. Um, and she's, she's not really playing, is she? I think she's very pretty. Oh no, but it was like before. she was the little school swat, wasn't it? That yeah. They all teased. But I just remember having to wait. Because because they didn't show us the the makeover. Was she? Uh, she was um, Mrs. Mangle's granddaughter. Or, yeah, something like that. Yeah, granddaughter or grandniece or something. <laughs> Here she is. Here she is. Is in and they said plain Jane did have baggy eyes though. <laughs> I've got baggy eyes. I can't also, I want to ask 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 our chums out there. Um, in the little advert that we just showed, Mrs. Mangle was wearing Lassiter's uniform, and I can't remember what her job was. Was she a receptionist or something? Yeah, what did Mrs. Mangle do at Lassiter's? Because I can't remember that at all. So Leanne McGee over here in Facebook says it's rumoured that Jane gets back with Des in tonight's episode. Over here in YouTube, Paul McFarlane is saying that Jane gets back with Mike. <gasps> You'll have to tune in. We're definitely tuning in to the last ones, aren't we? Oh, definitely, yeah. Um, did she get the glasses off of Deirdre from Corrie? Oh, we love them big glasses. BG Bear. We put a plea out for them. And we got, uh, we got, we got, we got some lovely ones from Joel. Joel and Sarah. Uh, and we got a birthday. box from Dead Man Specs. So we've got some um, cracking big, big uh, and Deirdre's. Jo- the ones that Joel said were brand new, weren't they? Yeah. Still had labels on them. But yeah, that was always the thing, wasn't it? The uh, the character would take their glasses off and let their hair down. You, they'd go, oh my God, you've been beautiful all along. Never worked for me when I was on the pulling garlands. <laughs> um... So there we go. Let's have a look what's going on over in. So we don't know anything about Neighbours. So if we're saying things that are spoilers, we don't know. And Leanne doesn't know. She's not watched it either. So we're all just saying what we're we just think. saying. Uh, let's have a look over in my number three. So talking about Lassiter's. My number three the is Lassiter's. Hole. Because Lassiter's was just such a shit. Oh, look at it. It was so rank and like, look at that corrugated iron roof. It was really rank. Do you remember the man who owned it, Mr. Lassiter, was really rough. Yeah. And, and it was really scuzzy. And was Daphne's it, little coffee shop was in there, which was, was it, all right. Was it a hotel? I think it was a hotel. It had a lake with a little house on it. It had the watering hole. It had that bridge across a really skanky swimming pool. Was it a golf resort? Pool. 
No. Who knows? But basically, it then became like everything. It was a spa. It was a spa. Paul, it was the centre of Robinson Enterprises. And then Harold had some kind of vegan cafe where everybody just ate watercress. I think there was a beauty salon in it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was um, so Lassiter's and just how it was kind of really pikey. Um, that's the wrong word. I shouldn't use that word. Pokey is the word I meant. It was really pokey and then suddenly it became like this hubbub of industry. I remember um, Paul and um, Camisole's office. Yeah, I do. It was always like lush and very sort of Ikea. Do you remember um, we we were obsessed also with, we like it like when businesses in soap operas like pretend to be like big business, like Robinson Enterprises. And do you remember... Um, Yakimoto? No, Ramberg Industries. Yes, in uh, Sons, Sons and Daughters. Daughters. Yeah, I, there was Mr. Yakimoto, there was, wasn't there? And they kept coming over for business deals. <laughs> and they're like, come on, come on, the Yakimoto's are on the way. <laughs> Mr. Yakimoto's on his way. Was he might like Mr. Papadopoulos? Did you ever see him? <laughs> That's a completely different ball game, Mr. Papadopoulos. <laughs> but in Lassiter's, what also, so I've got a little sideline of this, is when Cheryl ran that pub, she renamed it this. So she renamed it that. Now, there is no way that if you saw that in the Australian Yellow Pages, or if you were walking by, you would call it anything but Shay Shay. Chez Chez. Shay Shay. I'm going to go in. Oh, that looks nice. Shay Shay. There's no way you'd say it's Shay Chez. Because we've got some capicals and then swirly lettering. So it always amused me. Shay Shay. (laughs) But it's meant to be Shay Chez. Because she's Cheryl. But yeah, Shay Shay. Um, so yeah, Lassit- Lassiter's Complex in general is my number three. Uh, Alan's number three. Number two, we're at Alan's number two, yeah? Mm. Here we go. You see, I loved it whenever there was a character from Prisoner popping in. Um, uh, and, you know, even re-watching Prisoner... Um, watching episodes where you know young actresses who are going to appear in Neighbours oh and actors I mean um, um, Harold was in it for years wasn't he oh yeah and you loved it didn't you when you're watching uh, Prisoner and you'd be like oh god that's Harold Bishop oh oh my gosh that's uh, Mim yeah, yeah, or yeah. that's Mrs Mangle oh yeah and um, but I loved the the, um, the homage to Prisoner when Neighbours put, put the scene in when all these ladies met for lunch they meet for a book book club don't yeah, they yeah uh, and he says it's Susan Kennedy sorts it all does. Yes, it? yeah, yeah. And, and you go, oh, look, and they're wearing denim. And they all have, um, do they, they have, have like they have little words that names that are sp- spun on like yeah. cell block H names like mouse and stuff. And... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, who have we got there? We've got Susan Kennedy who played Chuck Julie Egbert. Yeah, right next to me, Margot Gaffney. Next to her is Margot Gaffney. Next to her, the amazing is Betty Bobbitt. Betty Bobbitt. Then we've got Doreen. Doreen, who was, was playing a, Cheryl Stark yeah. at that point. We, Shay Shay. Then we've got Mousy Mouse. Mouse, Genta Sobat. Don't know how I remember that. And I don't know who the end one is. It's uh, it's, uh, it's Nana. It's the woman who plays the piano and sobs You're for her joking. nana. joking. Jennifer. Jen- Jenny Hartley. Jennifer is Jenny Hartley, isn't it? You're joking. Oh, my God. Because I know that B. Smith was in, in it um, a while a while back as well. Wasn't she? She came in it for a, a short bit. Yeah, let us know. I think that's um, Jennifer, Jennifer Hartley. Um, I'm pretty sure it is, and I think um, she mentions that, like the piano or something when yeah. when she's talking about it. Um, um, Richard Bobbins, obviously, it's Raylene Pierce. Oh no, not at the end there. It's not. It's definitely not. it's definitely Jenny Hartley. Um, I can't remember the actress's name. Um, Jenny Sobat's the name of Jenny Sobat is Mouse. I would know all of these names. I think Jane Clifton, Betty Bobbitt, Colette Mann, Genta Soba, and can't remember. I know her grandma was was Eileen Britton. Jenny Hartley. It is. Uh, Rob Robin Stuff said it is Jenny Hartley. Oh, so I loved it when that happened. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> David Moore says it's Kylie. She just aged badly. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really funny scene. If you've not seen it and you are a I self like it's fan, on, it's, it's on the search YouTube. it out. It's on the YouTube. But yeah, it was lovely when you. Um, Saw people popping up. Madge was in prison cell block oh, a, a few lot, times, wasn't she? A lot of them were, yeah. She was Reb's mum, and yeah. she was also mum... Mum Brooks' daughter. daughter. Which makes Reb Keane mum Brooks' grandchild. 
Um, oh yeah, and Reb Keane. Wow, wow, that was a. Oh, Reb Keane was in it. That, but that was that given was up by then. Oh, great to see, wasn't it? Because she was so nice in Neighbours. Uh, someone mentioned here, over here, uh, Will Venus when Jackie Woodburn, right next to me here, when she cut her long red hair, and Will felt devastated when Susan Kennedy went for that short Daphne cut that we were talking mm. about earlier. Um, do you remember she had um, amnesia as well? Yes, Jackie and, Woodburn. Had amnesia. And they had to sort of rebuild her life. I think she thought she was at school, mm. <laughs> and she went to do her HSC. And I know the actress um, was absolutely gutted when she heard the news that it was ending. Well, she's been in it 37, 30 years, I think, the Kennedys have been yeah. in it. It's a long time. Because in my head, the Kennedys family is kind of a new generation of neighbours. Because they're mm. after, like, the Willises, Cody. Cody. But, of course, they're, like, they're decades of neighbours, they are. My number two is... The language that neighbours gave us, so the the slang that neighbours introduced to us as uh, Brits, so words like spunk, <laughs> oh he's a right spunk, oh he's looking spunky, mm. I like that, the fact that they didn't do A-levels, they did HSCs, uh, utes, chuck wagons, yeah, Barbie, the Barbie, um, uni, Going to uni. We H- never said that before, neighbours. Have, have you said HSC? HSC. Sticky beak. And thongs. Are, are they're flip-flops, isn't it? Flip-flops. Do you remember what they'd say if you told on someone at school? Oh, they dobbed me in. Oh, yeah, dobbed. <laughs> Dobbers. Lagging. Lagging. Lagging's from... Uh, uh, sunnies. Was it, sun, was it sunglasses? Sunnies. sunnies. Spunk. Flaming galah. That's uh, home, home and away, isn't it? Flaming galah. The Dunny, of course, the Dunny, mm. going to the Dunny. Paul McFarlane, who do you think will utter the last ever words in Neighbours? Kylie or Jason? Sure of it. It'll be Kylie or Jason. Yeah. Uh, Erica says, remind me, why is it finished? It's finished because um, Channel 4, Channel 5, sorry, who own it in the UK, play it in the UK, decided not to re commission it yeah recommission it to pay to keep paying for it so the network in australia can't afford afford it without the uk money so it's it's stopping it's sad because i mean there's still so many fans isn't there yeah and channel not... five have put on i think um cash in the attic is going to replace it and i know a lot of uh, a lot of the fans are saying you know get rid of it <laughs> well, it's had to, it's got such it has got good ratings but i guess you know they want to invest in british drama British TV um, they and I, I think they were hoping somebody else would come along and perhaps save it yeah they? yeah but um, but no oh it's a shame but it's going to be tied up with a nice little neat bow um, <laughs> uh, Shari's like me I too think of the Kennedys being new yeah the new yeah. generation neighbours yeah yeah but yeah all those new words it gave us the chuck wagon um, tinnies um, yeah that was a uh, that was a big part of me. And like, uh, you know, uni. Uni is something that's come in. And up speak. However, on in mm. England, started talking like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, so that's my number two. Alan, we're at num- your number one. I know. Alan's number one is... Of course it would be... Suddenly I feel me. It was such a, such a big thing. We'd heard about it in the UK a year before it arrived. Yeah, so we knew it was going to happen. We knew it was happening. Oh, it was such a long wait. And then when it happened, it was over, over within a few minutes, wasn't it? Uh, but, you know, we recorded it. Uh, my dad loved the song, so he, did, he was doing the whole record thing near the speaker until they brought it out on a record. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and I think they brought the video out on MTV. They might have done the music video on MTV. Um, and it, that that was one of the examples where we watched it three times, you know. Yeah, I think we. I watched. I must have watched it twice. I guess we watched it at lunchtime time. and then um, in the evening. And do you remember the song was so like beautiful? And you're like, mm. oh, I can't wait to buy that song. And, and then when you saw the guy who sang it, yeah, shaved guy, like, a, and he looked like a real thug, Ang- didn't Angry he? Anderson. Angry Anderson. Yeah. Um, and of course, we recreated that. Of course, early this year. Yeah, if you've never watched it. So we recreated it pretty much when it was announced that Neighbours was ending. Mm. Um, If you've not watched it, go and watch our version. Um, Because we do do it kind of shot for shot remake with us playing all of the congregation, the vicar and Scott and Charlene. Yeah. 
And if you've not seen me and Alan as plain Jane Superbrain and Lucy in bridesmaids' dresses, you've not lived. And we've actually got an interview on Friday with York Radio um, about Neighbours. Yes. Um, because they're well and truly aware of our videos we've created. Yeah. So that we're going to uh, pre-record an interview with them, aren't we? Yes, we are. We're doing an interview on Friday about Neighbours for BBC Radio York. Flaming galah! Oh, I won't be saying that. I might say that. I might slip in a flaming galah. Uh, so do my number one. Yeah. So my number one is... <laughs> Fiona Cork's Wardrobe by Camisole. You would expect nothing less from me. Um, I like, I was obsessed with that that line when it used to appear on um, the credits of Neighbours. Mm. She was the only person who had that, who, who was sponsored and dressed by someone. She did have funky outfits, big shoulder pads. Big earrings. Really fancy earrings. Great hairdos. What happened to the earrings when she answered the phone? Pulled off, of course. Slipped off. Clip on. You see, Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward does that when she answers phones on yeah. her. Cool. Off it comes. Uh, when, when we met Helen Beat from Hull Kingston Radio, um, she actually had a hoodie, and on the back of the hoodie it said Fiona Cork's Wardrobe. Was it Fiona Cork's Wardrobe? Fiona Cork's Wardrobe by Camisolo. Yeah. In exactly that font just yeah. across the back. Yeah, amazing. Um, yeah. So Fiona Cork, I like. I loved all the fashions in Neighbours at the time. Um, but she seemed to have the best. But she had the best. She had, a, she had that kind of sprayed fringe that a lot yeah. of girls at my school had, where the fringe, like something about Mary hair. Yeah. Fr- sprayed fringe going across like that, quite tight here, mm. with a bit of body there. Um, she married him for a business deal, didn't she? Yeah. And then I think they fell in They're love. They warmed to each other. Yeah. And do you remember who played her dad? Um, it was, uh, was it the guy from Silver Cage? Yeah, Mervyn, Mervyn Pringle, Mervyn the one who Pringle. married Joyce Barry. Yeah. Um, Heath Breeze, Heath Breeze just mentioned as well, I was going to mention that, another kind of neighbours credity thing was always Mushroom Records. Yeah, supplied. <laughs> you always thought, well, what is Mushroom Records? Now, Alex Johnson's made a good point, um, saying that none of us mentioned Bouncer's Dream. We didn't mention, but we've mentioned Bouncer's Dream on another um, another episode. I think when we talked about mm. Neighbours last year, we played Bouncer's Dream as well, which we got told off for mm. by the Scylla Black Police. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Bouncer's Dream was iconic. He gets married in his dream, doesn't he, he to does, another little dog? dog yeah. um, there was another dream in Neighbours. Wasn't there like a Kung Fu dream? Who had a Kung Fu dream in Neighbours and beat up some ninjas? Um, Paul saying the first scene in Neighbours was a dream sequence with Danny Ramsey. Oh, wow. That might be Yeah, it. there was a... Ju- was there a ninja fighting scene in a dream in Neighbours, or have I imagined that? Um, Will Venus mentioned it, I think, about the... David Moore also said the very last scene of Neighbours should be Bouncer waking up after a horrible 37-year nightmare. Yeah. Like Pam in uh, Dallas waking up. And also when the crossroads ended, there were just girls in a supermarket. (gasps) Yeah, that's that's for me. Weird, isn't it? Or when St. Elsewhere finishes, it's just like toys in a dollhouse. Yeah. Um, It was Madge Bishop's dream. Um, Jason Darcy's also said there was a Christmas dream where they were all toys as well. Oh, I don't see that one. (laughs) Um, and Heathbreeze also said, "Was there also bouncers supplied by Luke's canine actors?" Oh, must be. He must be, he must be twins, wasn't he, or triplets? Filippo has said neighbours made a zombie spin-off at one point. They did. I think it was online, mm. um, and maybe some dead actors came back for it. Nibbles is here, everyone. Hello, Chris. Hello. Chris is on his break and he's popped in to say hi. Your wife is in the caravan chatting over this side of my screen. Um, she most probably says hello to you as well. A happy anniversary, Chris. Ninja Dream was Madge Bishop and Clive Gibbons had a dream with the Christmas dream, most probably the toys, episode mm. 400. Um... You see, that was fun about Neighbours. They did fun things, didn't they? They did. It was weird. Do you remember they were always doing, like, Ramsey Street Olympics? Oh, yeah. All and it was sporty. always Ramsey versus Robinsons. Yeah. But they had the weather, didn't they? They had the weather and lovely wardrobe and shorts. And they went to school in shorts. <laughs> they did go to school in shorts. They went to school in little shorts as well, didn't they? They did. 
Um, and it's launched these careers. So Guy Pearce, who else? Russell Crowe, not launched mm. his career, but he was there in it. Margot yeah. Robbie, Natalie Imbruglia, Holly Valance, Kiss Kiss, um, Delta Goodrum, is that the right name? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of other people whose careers it's launched. Christian Schmidt, who was going to come over and present going live, um, but couldn't get his work permit, so I think they got John Barrowman instead. Oh. And he might have come over and played Jason, J- Joseph. Do you remember they all were coming over to oh, do yeah, theatre? Panto, didn't and they? And Panto. Oh, yeah, they, um, yeah. Here she is, is saying, Girls, have you already mentioned you're on travel radio this Saturday night from 8 pm? Oh, as you we have it. We, we mentioned it you earlier. Here she is, but we didn't know if we could launch like the actual episode. But yeah, we're going to be on Travel Dot Radio this Saturday night from eight pm, chatting to Here She Is and choosing our favourite songs. And I'll repeat again: please look at his videos on YouTube. Oh, so funny! So we were laughing funny. our heads off last night. Oh, we, we were. I love how um, he sits down with them and shows them a clip that's off. Our, that's our favourite bit, I think. And he breaks it, breaks a clip apart, looking for all the little funny bits, and he replays it. Um, I mean, if you love our stuff, you're going to love his. Mm. Um, my loves, we should end. We're going to have a lock-in. Yeah, yeah, we're locking in tonight. But for all of you that were just here for the Neighbours special, we are signing off and saying good night. Enjoy the last episode if you're watching it. You can, of course, tip us. If you've enjoyed tonight and you think you want to pop a couple of coins in our purse, um, you can... Point your camera on your phone at this little thing here and it will take you to our coffee page, which is somewhere where it's really easy for you to buy a coffee um, for us. So it's um, three pounds is like a recommended donation. You can do whatever you want. And all that money goes towards us buying bigger and better things for our future projects. So um, we've got some wigs on the way, haven't we? Which yes, is all we've got thanks some wigs to for people in your tips. Uh, one of our live events, which is planned for later in the year. But of course, we like to end with a song. Normally, we hand over to our gorgeous Scylla Black to sing us out. She'll be frigged off because she's not had a song for ages. Actually. Tonight's a little bit different. <laughs> Um, but for those of you who kind of balk at Scylla's voice, wait till you hear who we've chosen for tonight. We will see you for a lock-in on the other side of this. It is my great pleasure to introduce to you some very, very good friends of mine, the cast of Neighbours. Get over there, he's singing again. Everybody needs good neighbours Just a friendly way each morning Helps to make a better day Neighbours need to get to know each other Next door is only a footstep Yeah, Des couldn't be bothered, could he? That was from the Royal Variety performance. Um, Scylla says, rest assured, none of the tip money goes towards getting her out of her crypt. <laughs> it's impossible. Um, there's a good question just come in from Alex Johnston. Alex Johnston says, what's your fave Neighbours spin-off song? So, like, uh, a song that was released by one of the Neighbours stars. His is Mona. Um... 
by Check One Two, which was Craig McLaughlin. Who Mona? Hey oh, Mona. Yeah, he songs, didn't he? Mona, tell me what you wanna do. Tick, tick, tick. Um, I like Torn. I love Natalie and Brulia's Torn. I think that's a gorgeous song. Um, Might have to be Kylie, I think. I think. Kylie, there's so many good Kylie songs, isn't there? Yeah, she just, you know, knocked it out of the ballpark. <laughs> what was Jason? Did Jason do Tears on My Pillow? Too many broken hearts <laughs> on the little mountain with his electric guitar. But <laughs> it, it didn't have a lead around. Mark Hall, uh, Stefan Dennis's Don't Make It Feel Good. If you see it, you will have seen. Mark will have seen this. My uh, my version of Don't It Make You Feel Good, oh, yeah. where I'm behind a dog oh, cage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he sang, didn't he, as well? The Alessi Twins released songs. They uh, released quite a few songs, I think. Um, there was, of course, Madge and Harold's Christmas song. Uh, oh, yeah, we do that on our um, Christmas, Christmas, Christmas videos. Songs. Too Many Broken Hearts in the World. Yep. Um, anyone else? Any other thoughts? Guilty Pleasure, Jason Darcy with Don't Make You Feel Good. I hope you play that in your um, sets, Jason. In Mr. Darcy's um, sets, I'd be requesting it. Um, Kiss Kiss, Holly Valance. Tonight I'm going to give you my kiss kiss. Which became um, the theme tune to Graham Norton, I think, back in the day. Oh, it did, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Yeah. Holly Valance, of course, pops up in Taken. She remember? does. She, yeah. He's her bodyguard. Yeah. Nothing can divide us. Ah, Jason with Donovan. love beside us, nothing can divide us. The twins did have a single. The twins, I had the single on cassette. The B side of the single had them when they they. Uh, I can't. The song was quite moody, mm. but um, it had a little nursery rhyme at the start, and they went, "I'm the queen of the castle, and you can be my dirty rascal." <laughs> I was a little obsessed with it. Do you do that every time you, you've got to try and get the accent? No, I do um, Meg Morris. Benito. We, um, me and my friend Juliet had bets on what would be Meg Morris's first line when she came into Neighbours. Mm. And I thought it was going to be, Marco, Rico, what on earth is going on here? And what was it? Can't remember now. It ben, wasn't that. Benito. It might have been Benito. Do you remember Benito? Yeah, they were an Italian family, weren't they? Yeah. Was she Italian or just married into Italian? She just married it. Oh, she might have been Italian. I think she did a pasta sauce and she maybe did. released it. Did they sell it? <laughs> I think so. Um, oh, how the fire will burn. What's that, Ooh. Alex? It's just flipped by. The twin single, How the Fire Will Burn. Did they have an album? Their song was all mixed up because it was like about twins. And then the Dirty Rascal song. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, Kylie's Can't Get You Out of My Head. Oh, yeah. Oh, Spinning Around by Kylie was a great yeah. one. And I showed Alan my favourite Kylie one. Well, I have a couple of Kylie ones that I love. Confide in Me, I really love. Yeah. Um, but the one, Did It Again? Do you remember I showed you the yeah, video? Yeah, yeah, where she's, where she's, uh, she's... She has fights with beat, herself. Yeah, beating up herself with Indy Kylie. She, and, in, yeah, she's lots of different Kylies. Uh, did see Dave, you soon, Chris. Bye. Did Dame Edna sing the Neighbours theme once and release it? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not surprised if she wasn't in it. Uh, Mark says the, uh, the twin song is When You Come Back To Me. I think it's called It All Mixed Up and Dirty Rascal. <laughs> Find out what Dirty Rascal is. I think it might be called Sacred Kisses. I'm sure it's Sacred Kisses by the Alessi Twins. I mean, I was thinking, you know, because all these um, English soap operas have um, now been sort of re-released on cable channels you know classic Corrie and classic Emmerdale and classic EastEnders um, I wouldn't be surprised if they do it with Neighbours oh do you think so like from the start yeah they might I think do. it's been on UK Gold because my little clips my little pictures were from UK Gold that I showed you yeah but I'm sure there's there must be it must be time to start all over again because people are la- lapping it up aren't they so the news in Two new bits of news in. Silla's announced that um, Benita was fired by Grundy. Silla's in the know. Silla knows all the ins and outs of the TV world. But Yorkshire Bus Guy has said Erinsborough is not an anagram of Neighbours. Erinsborough is two letters longer than Neighbours. What, what letters are remaining? The do- O's. Neighbours has only got one O in it. Erinsborough's got two. And what's the other letter? That's- Unless Erinsborough is spelt without that O. Bruh. Erinsborough. 
I don't know. But name you can get names out of Erinsborough. Alex Johnson says, that's still, that's still. Didn't Harold do a rap? He fell off a cliff, didn't he? <laughs> fell off a cliff. And, and came back. Disappeared in, in the ocean, then came back and was just in the Salvation Army. And, and wasn't his name. Harold, wasn't he? Yeah, we had amnesia. Well, I, lo- that old, I love a bit that of amnesia. Old chestnut. I love a bit of soap amnesia. Um, B had amnesia in supplication, didn't she? Yeah, and she then was, she thought she was a good. She was bomb. Yeah, you know, we <laughs> saw her like, bust over the head. But wasn't she like sit like a lo- like a lovely lovely lady B? I'm sad you in my mints and tatties. I don't know what's going on here. I've no, I wouldn't. Eat, I wouldn't hurt a fly. Where the Wild Roses Grow by Kylie and Nick Cave was good. Yeah, that was good. Do you remember when Kylie went proper indie and she, um, at the Royal Festival, she was for the Poetry Festival came out. I think it was to do with Nick mm. Cave. And she read a poem, but it was the lyrics to I Should Be So Lucky and it took a little while for people to figure out what it was and then everyone just started laughing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I loved how Kylie suddenly got really racy. And it's like, oh, she's grown up. Oh, look at her. Uh... Alex and Mark are working out the our little Clive and Gifford in Wales are working out what those lyrics are. Um, Scylla says there's always a bit of artistic license with neighbours, Yorkshire bus guy. Yeah. <laughs> with all the soaps, I mean the they pulled some punches, haven't they, over his, over the years. Um Oh, Nibbles is still in. Shari says, I bought Chris a DVD of the best bits of Neighbours for 50p from the Chazza. Ooh, Ooh, that'd be worth a bit now. Oh, we'll borrow it if you've still got it. We'd love to watch it. Um, did they do any sort of weird spin-offs, like videos, like Corrie did? When Corrie, when they went on like a cruise ship? No, I don't think so. They did come over to England, though, and do episodes over here. Mm. And Denise Van Outen was in Neighbours for a while. She played someone's mum. Oh, she was in it for a, she was a proper yes, character. She was, wasn't she? Yeah. Um, here we go, Steve. The worst amnesia in a soap was Angela in Sons and Daughters. Oh yes, I remember that one. She that was, was right early on, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, she fell off a horse, didn't she? <laughs> yeah. Daddy, Daddy's horse. My daddy, my daddy gets me horses. There's two R's as well, and there's only one R in Neighbours. It's the debate is raging on in YouTube for all of you in the Facebook room. Facebook's quite placid. YouTube is the raging about this anagram business. Um, come round for a watch. We can go round and have a neighbour's night. We'll uh, get Chris with his corks on his hat. Yeah. Uh, here she is, says um, he needs to give his mate a call out. I'm making a watch this. Her name is Deaf Steph. Hiya, Deaf Steph. Hello, Deaf Steph. Thank you for watching us. Um, no, she had two amnesias. One when she split... Oh, yeah, when she split up from Rob. We quite yeah. liked Rob, didn't we? Yeah. Clive, a, Clive slash Gifford. I'm not sure which one Alex is, but he's he's just put a link to um, How the Fire Will Burn, Jason Donovan song. Oh, How the Fire Will Burn. Um, and uh, Thomas Corrigan is in. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Thomas. How are you? So Alex Johnson says, Harold Bishop rap wore an afro wig and wrapped i haven't watched it for a long time mm. if you can find it alex send it our way because i'd love to see it if anyone wants to see a really funny version of the um mm. neighbors theme tune look up on youtube neighbors theme 2001 or neighbors theme episode 2001 and it's the most kind of bizarre kind of Fever Dream version of Neighbours sung by all the cast. Even different than what I showed before. I, I would, I would imagine, if you haven't done it already, that Channel 5 will be doing top best 50 Neighbours moments, do you? You know, when they have, like, people... I don't know, because, because they're, they're, like, shamed. shamed. They're, the, yeah, they're the enemy. Mad so job. I don't think they're going to. I won't put it past them. Um, Stevie H, you haven't mentioned Better the Devil You Know. Better the Devil You Know. Better the Devil You Know. Which is the song which has... Um, the uh, a rapper that went into the Big Brother house. She wasn't very nice when she went into Big Brother. What from Neighbours? Kylie song. No, she was just a normal person. Was she called Jazzy P? <laughs> was there someone called Jazzy P? Who sang "Shot Like the Lightning from Up Above"? You must know it. In "Shocked," the Kylie song. Doesn't Jazzy P sing something? And didn't she then go into Big Brother? And was she nasty? Uh, Smock Bob says he's got the 2001 theme on 7-inch. Oh, Smock Bob. That's a classic. 
burn it into MP3, send it to our inbox. Some of we you love are, things some of you like are that. Really good gems, aren't they? Yeah, the um, the Yakidar boys have got a LP collection that we are well jealous of. We'll be thumbing through that when we visit. <laughs> CVH says yes. She sang on Shocked and she was behind a paper keyhole. <laughs> she was. And Yorkshire Boss Kai has said, talking of anagrams, Kylie Minogue is an anagram of you like Minge. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Oh, hey. <laughs> Um, that's no, it's Jamie's out of bed again. Yeah, I know. I'm getting. It's, do you know what it is? Look, I bought up. He's on the old. I uh, bought up some gin. Lemon drizzle. I bought up some gin, so I'm getting getting giddy. She's getting cobby. <laughs> Jazzy P. Uh, she was in Big Brother. I don't remember what year, but she, she, I don't think it was a Channel Five years. She wasn't a nice lady. Uh, Joel Hazeldean, I remember when Mrs. Mangle got knocked off a ladder by Bouncer and got amnesia. Oh, they well, used to throw amnesia in all the time, didn't they? Well, if some of you are Divinity fans, you'll know that she uses Neighbours cards as her reading. Um, she does. For card reading. And I think she does somebody reading, and there's a, one of the cards of Mrs. Mangle on the floor, isn't it? Someone gets three Mrs. Mangles. They do. So Divinity reads, instead of using tarot cards, she uses, we've got a set of Neighbours collectible cards. Which Divinity has. Divinity has. And she uses those. She's also got Golden Girls. Yep, and some PG chip, chimps. So Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward has said, I was watching the show the other day and Amanda Holden is in Neighbours playing Jason Donovan's real-life daughter's mother. What? Alan's met the Donovan children. They taught him how to do skiing, didn't they? Well, if if if, if Dolly's still in, she's was, gone. I think it was her. Her ne- they lived next door to her. Um, they were lovely little children. Lovely they came girl. in and told you how to ski, didn't they? Yeah, pizza and chips or something. Pizza, pizza or chips. Um, they'll be teenagers now, won't they? Well, no, well, she's in uh, Angie Donovan. Uh, not Angie Donovan. That's the wife. The daughter Donovan's been in Neighbours for for a long time now. Yeah, and the um, the son was in uh, Meet the Richardsons. He, he popped wasn't up in Meet the Richardsons. Yeah, Zach. Yeah. I can't remember the daughter's name. Um, oh, Mrs. Mangle, the actress, moved to England to Cornwall to to escape the abuse she received. I know, and it's stupid. Oh. And it's silly. I once read that, that she got... People thought she was in real life, like Mrs. Mangle. No, that... Bubbles has said, Bubbles has said, when we left her house on Saturday night, she's had her first bad hangover for many years. Oh, I'm sorry. We're a bad, we're a bad influence. Well, we wanted to stay and drink more, didn't we? Well, we couldn't because we've got a little, little girl We home. had to get home for Peggy. Uh, another anagram of Kylie is, I like guy on me. Gemma Donovan. Gemma Donovan is uh, Donovan's daughter. Not Donovan Donovan's daughter. That's Daisy Donovan. Gets a tangled web when we go down that route. Um, did we lead poor Bubbles astray? We didn't, did we? No, no, no. Bubbles led us astray. She um, thought she was on the Bubbles, wasn't she? Vivian Grey was from Cleethorpes in real life. <gasps> no, really? Is that near you? Yeah. Well, it's not far from here, yeah. Uh, Bubbles was drinking bubbles. She was on the Prosecco. And I was on the Fruity Cider, wasn't I? So Martin Garton Spencer's asked a question. Is Anne Charleston the only Neighbours actor who was also in UK soaps? No, well, there was Marion from Home and Away. Yeah, but she's not a Neighbours actor. Oh, is she, she not? Did she not pop in it? No. No? Um, mm. Mm. Anyone, any thoughts? Any other actors, actresses from Neighbours that popped over into UK soaps? Um, I think it's just magic, isn't it? I don't, I mean, Henry. Didn't Henry do something over here? Uh, Henry was in, I think, a, a, like a like Torchwood. Not Torchwood, but a show like that. Spooks or Spy? No, he wasn't in Spooks. Henry was in something. What was Henry in? He was in like a sort of detective drama. Was it a British drama? Yeah. Can't remember. Shane Ramsey was in Queer as Folk. How was he? I don't remember, but it's in. Oh, there was one who was in Emmerdale who then appeared in Neighbours. I heard that Charlie Bartlett used to be one of Benny Hill's angels. We knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) 
Oh, we should, we should have Charlie Barley, didn't we? Did Bouncer Don't. play Wellard in EastEnders? I don't think so. No. Henry was in Bugs, that was it. Bugs. Bugs. And did you remember Flying Doctors when yeah. uh, Shane went off to be in that and then it was a big hit on... Yeah, everyone went over to it. Oh, let's follow, let's follow yeah, him to that. Let's watch Flying Doctors. I think the BBC played it. We we loved Australian soaps, didn't we? That's that's the, the truth of it. We just... There's just something bright and colourful and they shiny. The a they shiny made, version they of England. They made dramas, didn't they? I'll be using that line in Radio York. Shiny version of England. Yeah. Shiny, shiny version of Britain. Shiny, sunny version. Now, do you remember when Granada tried to emulate the success of Neighbours and had a soap that was set half... Families. Half in Australia and Ooh. half in Manchester. Oh, yeah. Families. Didn't work, did it? No, I think it, it's a Jane's mother from Neighbours was in Families, I think. Yeah. So that's another Neighbours actor that was in an English soap. Yeah, um, I, I remember that. It didn't really work. Alex Clark says, there's a thought that Susan and Carl Kennedy might turn up in UK soaps as they got, got the UK ancestors. Smock Bob says, Pat the Rat from Sons and Daughters is from Coventry in real life. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of um, actors from Australia from the UK. Um, yeah, a lot of families have gone over there. And I, mean, I, I still keep seeing like um, stories of how uh, the stars of Sons and Daughters are up in arms because they just don't get any of the, the the money that the DVD releases create. Here we go. Uh, Heathbury has come in. Important news. Hannah, a.k.a. Button, so Hannah Martin, was a backpacker in Corrie. Oh. So there's one. So Hannah Martin. Button was in Corrie. Um, so we're going to do a Forgotten Soaps night. Alex has mentioned it a couple of times. We've mentioned a few little Forgotten Soaps. So let's do a Forgotten Soaps night in the next few weeks. Yeah. We are well. also planning... Now, how does this go down? An hour Q&A. You can send us your questions in. But a Q&A live with Sherry and Brandy. Would you like that? And also Winge and Blockett. And Winge and Blockett will do an hour as well. There's a method in our madness for doing it, but we're going to put it out there. And, um, yeah, I think it'd, it'd be good for us, and I think it'd be good for you to see us um, in those guises. Do you want to answer Thomas there? Um, oh, Thomas Corrigan. Now, Thomas Corrigan is a big fan of the Chuckle Brothers. Uh, to me, to you. To me? To, to me, you. Thomas? To you? To you, Thomas? To me, to you? Uh, the chuckle. One of the Chuckles is going to be on Celebrity Master Chef. There you go, Thomas. Thomas. What a... Well, I can't remember what his name is. The Chuckle That Lives. Oh, I can't remember his name. Paul. Is. Paul Chuckle. Barry. No, Barry. Sure. Barry. I think Barry's got Paul. on the bridge. Paul Chuckle is going to be on MasterChef. So, yeah, an evening with Sherry and Brandy. We'll, um, we'll get them up here. So they'll be sat in these seats. Instead of our names there, we'll get Sherry and Brandy. And um, I can't say they'll be very good at this. They might not be technically savvy. But it'll be a one-off. I tell you now. Yeah, so we'll, answer, we'll answer questions. So, like, we'll we'll put a thing out, and you people can email us in questions rather than Sherry and Brandy having to keep up with your comments. We'll get comment. We'll get questions. But yeah, we'll do an hour with Sherry and Brandy, and then an hour with Winge and Blockett. Will we do it on a Wednesday night? Oh, we can do. We can do it a different night. Um, whatever. Whatever. I'm very free and easy. Good. A lot of love for that. A lot of love. People saying, yeah. Um, would you like it on a Wednesday night or would you like it on a Friday night? I mean, if, if, if you can't join us, it'll definitely it'll be, still be up on It'll be YouTube going on, on the YouTubes. Any, any thoughts? Any pr preferred nights? Is it best to keep it to Wednesdays? Because that's kind of in everyone's diary. Paul McFarlane. Cap Paul, Paul Capicals. Let's come in with Friday night, party night. <laughs> now, it would be actually a good idea if we did it when you, you lot at home can have a few. Oh, Thomas, thank you. Thomas says I was very good on Coronation Street. Thank you for watching, oh, thanks, Thomas. Thomas. It's nice to see you again, Thomas, because it's been a while since you popped in. Timmy Alexis, we, uh, we were inspired by Noel Gordon's uh, biopic Nolly coming up to create our version, which is called Turtle. Uh, if you've not seen it yet, have a watch. It's uh, Amy mm. Turtle's backstory. Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday night drinks. Friday night is rehearsal night, nibbles and bubbles. Wednesday, either. Either's good. Wednesday, Friday will be fab. Friday's an extra. So, 
we'll have a we'll have a look at the comments and see what what is best. Friday night is better for jam shed consumption, says Coral. Uh, Thomas Corrigan says, "Happy birthday, Peggy!" Thanks. Oh, Thomas. thank you, Thomas. Uh, Yorkshire bus guy, it is online. Um, it's on our Facebook page. Um, it's on my CV. What's he asking? Corey to see my Corey clip. Have you got it? Have you put a video of it up yet? On your... Yeah, I don't think I've put it on YouTube though. Um, but it's on my. If you go to jamiehoneyborn.co.uk, click actor. Then click CCV, and then you can look at all my clips, and there's they're all in there. Uh, here she said, Wednesday, Here she says Wednesday is good because it's a bath night. Here she is watches us from the bath. She'll be yep. pruned up now. She'll be pruned up. Oh, um, I bet she's got a slingbacks on. I know. Um, Def, and a, Def, and, a, and a, buckle, a buckle of bubbles. Def Fiona, all bit is Def Fiona in the bath as well. It's not Def Fiona. What was her name? Def Steph. Def Steph. Is Def Steph in the bath as well? Is she down the tap end. Um. We'll have a Friday or Saturday night with Sherry and friends. Yeah, maybe a Saturday night. But perhaps, perhaps people are party night Saturday. Perhaps night. Sherry and Brandy should be Friday and the the um, winter block. Oh no, I'd need to, we. I think we uh, they'd need time to re- recover. <laughs> yeah, you would. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I want at least a week between because if it's like if we need to work out, we need to look at what happens. We have to because we'll be downstairs answering the phones, me and him. Yeah, yeah. While we, they're up yeah. here. Um, we'll we'll keep we'll keep you posted, but it'll happen soon. Um, Alex Johnson, I saw Paul chuckle in my local supermarket a few years ago. He was stood right next to me. I said to him, "To me, to you, to me, to you." Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. Thought it was real for a minute. It might be. Um, Bucks Fizz night Saturday would be good. Said Nibbles and Bubbles. Uh, Sherry Saturday night session. Saturday night. Scylla could come out of the crypt on a Friday. Mm. Could Scylla come out of a crypt on a Saturday? What? Scylla? <laughs> what? Hey, what? Timmy Alexis Carrington says, I was thinking you're very old, Coronation Street. Hashtag Barbara said it. How about Sherry and Brandy in the bath together? Friday as an extra, says Luna Tunes. Oh, that's a sight not to see. Um... We'll keep an eye on it, but that's yeah, that's like we're gonna do that. I think it'll be good for us to have a night off and good for them to do an hour. Um, it'll, be, it'll be funny. It will, it will Sunday be funny. night, we couldn't do Sunday night because it's a school oh, night. It's a school night. 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 Oh no, bath and bed. Um, Friday, please love it. Love it when the spaceship come down. Thomas, what's that about? What, what program is that, Thomas? In Dallas. Um, my lovelies, we are winding up. We're going to wind down and say goodnight. We're going to wind, wind, us, wind ourselves up and wind ourselves down. Uh, pop Peggy in the garden. We will leave you with... Let's leave you with the sisters of Gabby Abbey just to play out. Um, so enjoy the last neighbours on Friday. Yes. Uh, we'll be back next week. Actually, I'll leave you with the neighbours gang again. <laughs> yeah. Um... Yeah, we'll be back next week. Maggie Bog, Maggie Bog's uh, the Bog Report. She's Rovi Rovi reporting next week. We'll be week. back. Uh, the Bog Report will be up on YouTube and Facebook tomorrow. Yeah. Please, please, please go to Facebook, uh, YouTube, and watch our stuff. Um, and if 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 you if you like what we do, then uh, click like and share. All right, loves. Spread the love. Bye. Have a good week, people. Bye. <laughs> great pleasure to introduce to you some very, very good friends of mine, the cast of Neighbours. Get over there, he's singing again. Everybody needs good neighbours, just a friendly way each morning, helps to make a better day. Oh